Hey guys, it's me, Dax Moy, from Fit System Training in the Dax Moy Academy. Um, back here with just another short video for you. Um, I always say that, don't I? I say they're going to be short and they always turn into, <laughs> into something a bit longer. But I promise I'll try and keep it short at least. Um, short video for you about, I guess, a new take on pain or understanding pain and specifically non-traumatic pain. Okay, so obviously we understand traumatic pain. Uh, you know, someone hits you with their car and breaks a bunch of bones. And of course, there's going to there's be a bunch of pain involved in that, right? But most of our clients, most of our patients come to us with pain of essentially undiagnosed etiology, right? In other words, there's no real reason for the pain's existence. Um, they suddenly get aches and aches and pains, you know, kind of soreness, restriction, limitation. So that when I'm actually discussing pain here as well, I'm not just talking about the actual ex expression of physical soreness, physical kind of discomfort, you know, pure pain. I'm also talking about pain manifesting itself as weakness, as restriction in terms of range of motion, and in terms of a reduction in motor quality okay you could argue that pain pain exhibits itself in all of these ways and so I just want to be able to discuss with you just a little bit about the my take on pain um, the body maps take on pain and uh, give you a bit of an idea that maybe just maybe the way that we're currently addressing pain is not the most efficient and effective way and there's no doubt as in my mind as to so much of this stuff works. You know, I'm a neuromuscular therapist, I'm a muscular alignment therapist, a kind of body worker of all, all different kinds, okay? And I've seen all of them work to greater and lesser degrees, and when combined in certain ways, they, they work fantastically, okay? But still we're looking at timelines usually of weeks and months. What if there was a way for you to get to the bottom of your client's pain in seconds and maybe even minutes? And what if there, there was a way to exhibit greater strength and greater function, greater range of motion, um, improved coordination, all of these things. What if you could change and improve them in seconds and minutes? Okay, and it sounds really hype, it sounds kind of impossible, but it's not. Not when you understand what pain really is from the perspective that I want to share with you here. Okay, so let, let's, let's do that. Let's take a look at what pain is. I'm gonna move you over here to my whiteboard and we'll see We'll see what we can see. We'll see if we can understand pain just a little bit more. So you're saying, okay, Dex, what's this new perspective on pain you, you want to share? And is it really new? Okay. Well, look, the truth be told, there, there is a lot of work out there already really discussing pain at the level that I want to speak about it. But there's not a lot of it being practically implemented in, the, in terms of how we treat and train our clients and patients. Okay. So here's, here's the big difference between the body map approach and the kind of the body worker or personal trainer or strength coach or performance coaches approach okay most of most of our work to do with pain and reduced performance occurs what i generally tend to describe as downstream okay so you so you imagine you know kind of literally if we if we paint ourselves a literal stream most of the work is far downstream we're already feeling and experiencing and exhibiting the pain and exhibiting the dysfunction and what we're what we're doing as body workers as strength strength coaches and trainers is we're kind of jumping in the river at, the, at this stage and we're kind of picking out all the garbage that's floating downstream and we're kind of we're putting up our filtration systems and our nets and everything so that we've got if you, if you will kind of clean drinking water right to stick with this analogy well doesn't that strike you as probably a very 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 inefficient and ineffective way to take care of what's going on on the river. Wouldn't it make a lot more sense that if you've got, in this case, a pain factory sitting upstream, polluting the river, river with all of the things that cause pain, doesn't it make sense to go straight for the pain factory rather than just keep cleaning up the pain at the other end? And that, in, a, in essence, is what the body map approach promotes, okay? It promotes going all, it, it says, hey, let's stop dealing with the the rubbing and the poking and the stretching and the correcting and everything else down here and actually go all the way upstream and close down the pain factory. Okay, so that's the, that's the first big distinction. Now let's look at what the pain factory really is. So what is this pain factory? Well, a pain factory is kind of easy to understand when you think about it, okay? Pain factory, if we, if we take this really awful, awful picture to be a representation of the human brain. 
okay, and this particular area at the back of the brain being the, being the cerebellum, okay, is responsible for all of the sensory data entering, entering the brain and coordinating it into a, essentially a map, okay, so you think about it in terms of an actual map where your brain can actually say, here's where each of my body parts are, here's what they're doing, here's how fast they're moving, here's how much control I've got, here's how much load they're under, etc., cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So what is actually feeding into the cere cerebellum? What is it that actually makes the map the most effective and up-to-date and accurate map possible? Well, essentially, it's the sensory system, okay? So we're, we're talking about vision, okay? So the visual system, the vestibular system, including balance and hearing, the proprioceptive system, the spatial system, and even though it's not normally considered to be a, to be a kind of a sensory system, we're also going to include the respiratory system because it actually does carry out some sensory kind of roles when you really think about it. Okay, so now we've got all of this information pumping into the cerebellum. Here's my little pumping in sound effects, okay? All pumping into the cerebellum, and the cerebellum actually saying, okay, this is where everything is. This is my understanding of my position in space, of what's going on around me, and essentially, and this is really, really important, how safe I am, okay? And safety in the human brain is really, really simple, okay? It comes from two distinct parts. Part number one is the ability to predict the immediate future. In other words, am I certain that as I'm standing here, I'm not going to collapse over, I'm not going to fall over, I'm not going to tip, I'm not going to drop something on myself, or something's not going to drop on me, right? So that kind of predicting the future, not will I win the lottery, right? So the ability to predict the future is part number part one of being safe. Part two of being safe is the ability to create the appropriate response to the current environmental situation, okay? So if you're, if you're able to predict and if you're able to create the appropriate response, your brain says, I am safe. And as, a, as part of being safe, it says, okay, because I'm safe, I'm gonna allow you to move as fast as you wanna move in the, as, across as much of a range that you want to move at, uh, kind of the speeds and the distances and the directions with whatever kind of loads you're, you're able, to, able to lift. I feel safe, therefore, please go ahead and use all the gifts that God, life, the universe, or whatever you believe in gave you, okay? That's what your brain is saying to your body. Now, as the sensory data starts to reduce, if you have any form of reduction in your visual field, if your vestibular, kind of your auditory and your balance fields, are, fields have been changed, if your proprioception goes down, if your spatial awareness goes down, and if you're breathing incorrectly, and we'll, I'll talk about that in a later, later video, but if you're breathing incorrectly, all of the data coming into the cerebellum is now sketchy parts of maps. The map is no longer clear. In fact, the map becomes quite blurry. And as the map becomes blurry, your ability to predict the future goes down and your ability to create an appropriate response goes down. So your brain is now under threat. Because it's under threat, it has a very simple conversation with the body that says, hold on, I don't want you to move as far as you normally move. I don't want you to move as fast as you normally move. I don't want you to lift as heavy as you normally lift. I don't want you to kind of do all the things that we consider to be normal function. I do not wish for you to do them, okay? And it starts to take back all of those gifts of what we would call function. Now, if you pay attention to those things, you pretty soon get them back. But if you don't pay attention to those things, your brain has got no choice but to nudge you in the right direction to taking, act, taking the appropriate action by setting off the alarm, okay? And the alarm is pain. Your body gives you pain, as a means of explaining to you that actually it feels unsafe and it doesn't know where it is on the map, okay? So that, in essence, is pain. So pretty much all non-traumatic pain can be addressed by working back through the sensory systems, okay? Before we go into the mechanical, before we go into, into the kind of the myofascia and look at the joints and everything else, we start upstream, okay? Because essentially, joints, muscles, everything else are downstream. Those aberrant movements, the knee poking in, the kind of the pelvis not moving correctly, the foot being pronated, that is so far downstream that it is almost inconsequential. You're seeing the effect. We're talking about the cause here, okay? So this is how the body map process differs 
from so many of the other other processes out there assessment processes and treatment processes is quite simply that we go about as far upstream as it's possible to go and we ensure the brain feels safe okay once you get the brain back to safety 90 percent of all pain just disappears 90 percent of weakness disappears 90 percent of, of of structural and functional dysfunction disappears you get range back you get strength back you get speed back you get power back you get coordination back pain reduces or disappears Okay, so this is in essence the, bo the body map approach. So I hope that makes some sense to you. In later videos, I'm going to speak to you a little bit more about each one of these, each one of these kind of sensory deficits. But I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview about what pain really is, and about how you can bring about dramatic changes without ever laying a hand on a patient or a client, without prescribing tons of exercises, without stretching the buggery out of them, or any of these other things. It's much, much, much simpler than most of us have been led to understand but it takes a different level of understanding than most of us have been training for, okay? And this is the body map approach. So that's me for this video. I'll be back again really, really soon with another. You take care.